Hi, uh, my name is Gary Pearson. Um, I am the actually the Career Technical Education Grant Manager for Davis Joint Unified School District. is my day job. Uh, today we're doing um, a project uh, related to the high school FFA program where we're actually chopping the cover crop. And uh, what you'll see today are two types of cover crop uh, that was established last fall. It's only had winter rains on it. Uh, the two types are we have purple vetch and we'll go out and, and I'll show you that. And then we also have plow down mix. Realize that there's been no herbicides placed on this to control any of the weeds. So we have issues with a weed species uh, from, Mal from Malva to uh, sow thistle uh, and all kinds of assorted things. Um, this, this specific site is Brentwood soil. It's a heavy clay soil. Um, it's been uh, fallow basically since so probably the early 2000s, uh, but systematically we've tried to rebuild the soil tilth uh, by adding cover crops. We've grown cover crops in here basically since 2006. So um, there's, there's some evidence that we've made an impact, uh, but we have such soil conditions. We have uh, high calcium, high magnesium because of the school site and how they prepared the ground. Um, so we, we've got a whole host of things. So uh, with that, we'll go take a look. Okay. Um, right now, this is actually prime time. It's really dry because we just haven't had the rains. So what I'm, what I'm trying to do now is I'm looking for exactly what this is. Um, as you can see, there's all the nodules have formed uh, in here. So that's a good sign. I didn't add any inoculum uh, to this uh, spot. I know it's history really well and it hasn't been an issue. Other soil situations, it may be different. But uh, this, this purple vetch and all those nodules, that's just a really good sign. So what we're trying to do now is we're going to chop it. I'll let it sit, and then I'll come back and I'll rototill it. By rototilling it, then I get the tilth and I get the nitrogen release, in theory. Uh, it usually takes about, once I turn it, incorporate it with the rototiller, uh, it does a really good uh, job. So. Anyway, so that's that one, uh, but that's fava bean. I was trying to see if I had any good peas. Um, and actually, the if you know anything about the nitrogen fixers, um, these are different uh, types. Um, and I don't know the, the specific name of the, of the nodules or the, the type of inoculum, but um, they all react differently. So, but this is naturally occurring in our soils. Haven't done anything to it. In this soil, I can get away with it. Cause... So what we have here is a really nice stand of purple vetch. That's exactly what you want to see in your orchard situation or uh, if you're doing vegetable garden or whatever. This is no contamination of weeds. And you ask me why, I don't know. <laughs> it's just uh, they didn't. there's not any residual weed species other than the mustard and that, but uh, that's a really nice stand. And then as we survey back through over here, you can see where we've got the residual mustards and fiddle neck. So it is what it is. Um, this, by the way, was all belly broadcast back in the fall. I wasn't able to get the drill, but you can do a pretty good job just doing a belly spreader. Uh, the tractor is all four wheel drive, diesel powered. Uh, we have on the back of this a five foot rotary chopper um, that's all back in here. Um, the other thing we have is other implements down. Uh, this is a, a, a five foot rototiller that fits the New Holland tractor. Um, it's very nice to have. It helps to incorporate the cover crop. Um, 
So that's one. Uh, I also have a, a eight foot disc here uh, that I'll, co I'll go through in the next operation. I'll probably go through and disc it, turn it. So that's just uh, one of the many implements that we have. Um, this soil is heavy, so since that, that is, I use these, what they call um, mud chains. And the mud chains keep the disc, this kind of a disc right here, that's a, um, a disc blade that cuts, uh, cuts into the soil top. And that back is, uh, you can see that they're round. This is kind of serrated. That's actually a good operation to do. Um, primarily uh, because the, the, these are called gangs, so the front gang and the back gang. Um, and these cutters actually cut really well. So um, that's just an important aspect when we bought the, we bought the disc. Uh, the other implements we have here, we have just have a scraper for the roads. Um, I have a single shank ripper that I use in the fall. I'd highly recommend any of your vendor types, orchard types for water penetration just go through the middle if if you can uh it's optional but that ripper shank is really important the other thing that we just uh, got uh, about a year ago is a slip plow okay so why would we use a slip plow a flip plow well in the cover crops um if we can flip it and then bury it it helps in the deterioration process so i may use that uh, uh if my moisture if i don't have enough moisture the slip plow won't work It'll just go across the top. So, but if you have that opportunity in your big open fields, it's really nice to have, so. One of the tips on, on chopping and stuff is uh, make sure that your chopper uh, first time through is not all the way on the ground because uh, it screws up the rotary.
and really turn it. But that, and that, this would bring up a lot of moisture, and I want to keep as much moisture as possible. So, but this is, see how loose that is? Now this has had a lot of compost. You can see the compost from before. Uh, we composted this pretty heavily. So, um, it's really loose. When was that last applied? Uh, that was last summer, actually. So, But a lot, huh? How, yeah. About oh, what yeah, kind of a rate? Uh, well, in this section alone, Out of the barn at the FFA, they had a lot of, of, of uh, animal waste uh, that we used that was compostable. So I brought that over and dumped it like once a week. So this got a lot of good. A lot of organic matter. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it still has its challenges, but uh, yes, yeah, see how loose that is now. Technically, I could come back here let it deteriorate, come back in about seven to 10 days and actually rototill it again and then put a bed shaper on it. Uh, uh, we have a bed shaper over at UC that I use from uh, uh, Dan and I could bed this up and plant it. What would, you, uh, what would be the point of rototilling once more before bedding? Uh, just to keep it loose okay. and then I'd run a, a bed shaper. So it would, it would settle some before that? Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Gary Pearson. Hey, it's always a pleasure. Anytime. Anytime you want to come visit us during the summer, come see the garden. Come see the wheat field when we process it. Come see the cover crop, what happens. Anybody's welcome.